Hi guys, welcome back to my show, my Steps to Sobriety on YouTube and as a podcast. So guys, go down there, press that subscribe button because it's worth it. I've got some amazing guests coming onto my show and we all are here to make this world just that little bit better, one interview at a time. So please guys, go out there, spread the news that this is a place where you can learn a lot about yourself by listening to the stories of those people who have gone often through hell and back and kept going, um, or who have just been tenacious and tried to figure out how life works and took one little tiny baby step to get to the new life that they wanted to have. And I guess that is probably a pretty good entrance for for our guest today. I've got uh, Kelly, Denny, Christina. Kelly is a woman who uh, is a woman of many talents and is very much a go-getter. A woman who is the boss, but doesn't always want to be the boss. A woman who is who is an, a fellow author. A woman who has found help in in Al-Anon and in other systems that that we, that many of us could so do with and, and, and actually expose ourselves to because these are all systems that maybe teach us to live a life so full and so wonderful that, that really you don't want to sleep because you're so excited. There's a new day. What shall we do? What shall we do? It's like, like a little puppy bouncing, 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 bouncing. Come on, let's play. <laughs> oh, that's me nowadays. Honestly, uh, that's, it's, it's, oh, it's a new day. Come on. What are we doing? <laughs> Throw that bloody ball, life. Give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kelly, <laughs> yeah, welcome to my show. <laughs> oh my gosh, Stefan, you're awesome. And I'm already loving this because I've noticed something. You have a very positive attitude, right? <laughs> and this is an amazing connection. Thank you for having me today. An absolute pleasure. And, and you know, it is, I, I certainly have a lot of darkness in my past and I, there were times when, when I was just hopeless, helpless, and so out there. But uh, I have had the right guidance. Um, people took me under their wings and showed me little glimmers of hope. And I latched onto them like a, like a drowning man onto a live ring. And suddenly I actually realized, huh, it's maybe not as bad. And then once I started, once I stopped licking my wounds, and once I actually started healing, uh, life is is changing, and it's changing constantly. So uh, it's beautiful. Life is gorgeous, um, and you are here to make a difference, and you are here to expose yourself, and that takes something, you know. And there's one damn good reason, because you have come from a point where you said actually my story matters and I want to share my message to those people out there how did that come about what was your story I mean you were a young go-getter uh, always so at the early stage you were successful but even before that when you were when you were a teenager or a young girl even what did you want to be who do you want to be you know I don't mean to laugh Stefan but um, you know, maybe because I, I do have a different life story. Um, I've been told and the reason why I can put out best selling, you know, life stories based on a life story is uh, a, a little bit of a unique background. Um, and sometimes I blame it on <laughs> the fact that at 12 years old, um, I was, you know, and this is, I don't know, we all have different goals, but I was going to run the United States of America, okay? And um, But I wasn't going to be just any president, okay? I was going to be the first female president, and I was going to be like John F. Kennedy. Just like that. And I blame that, Stefan, on I was raised in Catholic schools, okay? And we love John F. Kennedy. But anyway, when that's a childhood dream, um, it's safe to say that your goals are always going to be a little bit over the top. Whether you ever run the country or you don't run the country, you already set your goals pretty high as a 12 year old. <laughs> so. Beautiful. Was that something that was fostered in your school? Was it an elite kind of, of prepping school that you were in? Or was that just, how would you describe your school? 
Uh, well, you know, I was raised in a Catholic school. I come from a very big, actually enormous um, Catholic family. Um, you know, dad had seven brothers and sisters. Mom had 12. Right. And then um, and then her mom died and um, her father, uh, you know, remarried. He had 12 children to take care of. And <laughs> then there were eight stepchildren. So a very, <laughs> very large Catholic family. Um, I, you know, I always admire and love um, the fact that uh, my father would, you know, he'd take the shirt off his back for his family and my mother too. And um, so anyway, in the Midwest, you went to Catholic schools and, you know, the Catholics in general, you know, I don't know, maybe we watched too much, you know, footage on John F. Kennedy when we were younger, where you sit in a Catholic school and you cry, but at a very young age, he would become my hero. <laughs> hmm. That's that's what, what did, happened. What did you like about him? John F. Kennedy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know we were talking about this today. Uh, um, that, I, what, what triggered you? What 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 quality of him? Because obviously you there was something that you thought, wow, what a charismatic man or something, or what a great policy or something that that was wow. There was not just this nebulous JFK um, kind of fan, but there was one thing or something about him. Well, um, you know, a lot of people um, say that, you know, if John F. Kennedy was here today, he'd be more of a conservative. He was definitely a family man. Um, he was definitely that admired leader. Um, and, you know, we're not here to do a John F. Kennedy oh, book. Oh, that's true, true, um, true, true. But, you know, I opened a site and uh, his most famous quote is something that I actually strongly believe in. Um, he wasn't about, it's about the Democrats or the Republicans. It's about the best decisions for the country. Uh, it's about us coming together, uh, working together, cooperating uh, and moving forward, you know, um, love the Democrats, love the Republicans, but love the country stronger. Mm. That's and, enough. And if that was the, 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 the key message that you took away as a young girl, then you are further than probably most of, your, of the leaders in your country. Because right now you have got the polar opposite to exactly that. But what you have got there, what you have nailed, was it is the key to crisis resolution, um, to, to actually pr bringing people towards the table, finding common ground, and then deal with the problem. This is great leadership. And if that was the message that you had learned at a very early stage, no surprise that you became a good communicator, that you became a good, um, a, a good boss, that you, that you became successful in your growth, because that's the key message. That's the key message dealing with difficult people, etc. So amazing, amazing to have that insight at an early stage. What, wow. I believe, I believe stronger leaders, actually. There's the know-it-all leaders, and mm. that's, that's what they are. They're know it all. They um, they can't. They don't open themselves up mm -hmm. to other people and knowledge. I actually believe stronger leaders have those stronger listening skills, which means you have the ability to sit down, shut your mouth, and listen. Yeah. Okay. And if you listen, if you know how to listen, um, you will be educated. Uh, a lot of you know. There's people that call me a genius, and this is way overrated, by the way. No, I'm not a genius. Um, what I have, though, um, you know, current day at 51 years old, um, I have a lot of shared knowledge. And because I've worked with so many different industries and industry leaders, um, they edu they have educated me over the years and mm -hmm. I've educated them. Um, but if you have that ability, that stronger ability to listen to people, there is so much out there that you learn. Absolutely, absolutely true. Uh, but in addition to learning, you're showing respect. You're showing that you that the other person cares, or that you care for the other person, shall I say, that the other person matters. Um, in medicine, as a doctor, uh, one of the key things for a good doctor is that when he meets a new patient, he says, hello, how can I help you? And then he shuts up. 
mm-hmm. and lets the patient actually tell the story rather than oh okay I know where you're going with that kind of and then you know influencing etc just shut up for a minute and a half because that's typically how long it takes a minute and a half or a minute and 45 seconds for the other person to really feel wow he listened to me and mm-hmm. What can you can you what else could you do in such a short period of time to gain the trust of a person? The only thing you need to do is shut the f up, and beautiful. So that is a key skill that leaders, both of us, have learned. And the other thing, if you guys, if you can't remember uh, how long um, to to shut up, in principle, you've got one mouth two ears you should use them in the same same uh relation okay in the same ratio <laughs> i agree and uh you know uh running on the mouth like i'm a talker i definitely can talk um you know if i got the mics in my hand um i can definitely be loud but by personality um i'm a little bit more of a humble success i don't need to run on my mouth i don't need blah, blah, mm. narcissistic bragging but but no that. That's the that's the quiet inside voice that you don't use when someone gives you a headache and you just want them to shut up. (laughs) But again, you don't have to say it. You know, there's a you know, that's the other thing I think uh, in smart and brilliance and and getting along with people Mm. out there. Um, We all have different opinions, lives different. And it's not necessary to share all your inside feelings. We can agree to disagree. Right. Mm. Very nicely said. Very nicely <laughs> said. Um, yes. It is what does really a fight and an emotional outbreak, uh, outburst really give you. It might make you feel good, but essentially it is sort of the, or you, you put it even worse, you put it in writing. You, you write the best email that you ever regretted. Um, and you just, yeah. I'm I'm guilty as charged. I'm a I'm a hothead. Uh, uh, I'm a communicator. All right, like, there's thousands upon thousands of people that I. Oh no, I got a letter from Kelly Christina. Or, oh no, I got an email from Kelly Christina. I'm about one of the strongest uh, communicators we got uh, in the country. I definitely. Uh, uh, and you know what? Sometimes you know, um, there's there's no way to be perfect. You know. There's times you um, sometimes wish, you know, I wish I would have handled that different or maybe I shouldn't have said that, um, but you do. (laughs) There's no perfect, no. I mean, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that feeling that, oh God, I shouldn't have sent that email. That was too emotional. That was too in your face. Um, How do you deal with that? I don't. Um, typically if you, if you get a strong message from me, there's a reason, which means, you know, uh, I don't typically regret it. Is that awful? Um, if you, if you're out there and you got a strong, let's, let's put it this way, you know, at one point, um, you know, I had attorneys and one attorney and we needed letters out to the, to the hospitals across the United States of America. Um, you know, I don't mean to jump in on government work, but I'm just saying, Sometimes um, there are projects in the country and you are going to, if the government officials aren't moving fast enough Mm. and you're working on the project, then you know what? You're moving faster. And I am one of those. I will come up with a faster, stronger plan and then I will just ignite it. And um, so anyway, um, letters going out to 65,000, yeah, 6,500 hospitals across the United States. I, I took that project. Okay. I launched it in. Um, Were the letters important? Yes, the letters were very important. Um, We needed to um, talk to the hospitals about red taping their budgets, uh, fraudulent contracts, and oh, by the way, be careful with your money. Um, So that's all in my book. But the point is, is that if you get a letter from me, typically um, there's a reason. If I leave you alone, you haven't done anything. (laughs) (laughs) But I have definitely sent out, you know, um, there were a couple years um, and I still do, by the way, defend father's rights. So, you know, all the father's rights movement, our strongest, uh, largest chapter of father's rights is actually Alaska. 
Um, but father's rights have heard from me in the country. There's a lot of people. Hollywood, we don't want to go there. Um, <laughs> I stop you there. I stop you there because stuff, we've, you stuff. have got so many gorgeous heads. I think I think we need to go one step back. So I had I had tried to sort of figure out who you, what created the powerhouse of of Kelly uh, now. So that's that's where I went into your past, and it's already uh, is we are we. What we need to do is uh, give the uh, viewers a chance. Tell us what is your what is your main uh, your main drive at the moment. Who are you? I mean, you are the CEO. Uh, you are a writer, but let's talk about the CEO. What is your company doing? Who are you? So, um, so I am the CEO of KD Staffing, and um, we staff uh, permanent medical professionals um, nationwide. And you know. My recruitment background is about 20 years. So I've recruited 49 out of 50 states in the United States of America. Hmm. Um, and uh, so that's my baby. Uh, I've been with the medical industry 20 years. And, um, and most recently, 2018, Steph and I opened my second business uh, and company, um, KDC Making a Difference. And um, that is books and public speaking. And, uh, you know, most recently launched an international best-selling book, which is very exciting. Um, and um, so, you know, best-selling author, um, I have two businesses, um, you know, the newest book that um, just last week in Arizona um, it took an international impact book award on writing the executive roller coaster medical staffing cases. Um, but we're just now... Um, um, putting out with the general public, what have I done part time within the government, um, working with government officials in the matter of making a difference? My legal work, my government work, and the very inspirational, oh, by the way, you fell down. And then, oh, by the way, how do you get back up? And when you're getting back up and you're rebuilding, it doesn't matter if we're talking about myself, we're talking about you, or we're talking about anybody in this world. Um, rebuilding anything when you fall down. It's not something that happens in hours. It takes hours. It takes days. It takes weeks. Um, but the question is, can you rebuild? I am all about the faith and the ability. And I work with a lot of people that fall down. And we fall down. We fall down um, sometimes one time in a life, twice in a life. Um, but do you have the ability to get up? Because when you get up, you're bigger, stronger, and you're better, mm. um, and you go stronger in the future. But, you know, I counsel a lot of people where, um, when they're on the down stages, because let's face it, it's depressing, right? And, um, but anyway, and that's, that's where we roll into, I'm 15 years in Al-Anon and my life program. Mm. And um, so, you know, I do in the matter of KD staffing, Stefan, and we're, we're dealing with people and jobs. That's an emotional topic, mm. all right? And a lot of it is confidential. Mm. In other words, the people that I work with, they don't need me to gossip. And I'm certainly not going to share their information. There's a reason why they trust me. And they trust me because I help them. Mm. So we do a lot of job coaching and life coaching in recruitment, you know? And that falls upon my own life coach and my own life program in church that gave me the ability to have some very mm. wonderful advice for people. Mm. Was that a long-winded answer? No, <laughs> this was a perfect answer because that is, you have over the years transformed and you got stronger and with uh, you learned new techniques, new skills, you had new insights. And that is what a positive life does. You are actually you are you are reinventing yourself. Or there is it's like cloning. So you've got, okay, you know, twenty years ago there was that Kelly, and suddenly plop a second Kelly comes out who has it's 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 the same Kelly but with a different goal. And plop and you've got three Kellys now. And that is exactly what is happening if someone focuses on getting their life right. And mm -hmm. it's it's virtually inevitable, I believe. It is that is what happens when you 
reinvent yourself. I mean, take me, I'm an anesthetist, I am an author. And when I started writing a book, I was my first book I wrote after just coming out of rehab. And I always had a saying, oh, there's not enough cheesecake in this world. And, and that is throughout my life, I said that, and I don't know why. And so I thought, hmm, okay, I learned to make cheesecakes, proper German cheesecakes. And so I cooked the hell of my kitchen. And that was my first book. It's an absolute awful book. Uh, it's a, the encyclopedia of cheesecakes. And oh, by the way, there are some re recipes in there too. And it's the typical kind of doctor approach. Uh, it's still out there and I keep it out there just to remind me uh, how far I have come. And, mm -hmm. But from, from cheesecakes, I, uh, I wrote historic novel. I, I wrote Steps to Sobriety, which is now being released in its second edition. Um, I wrote my first children's book up there, and that's Esme the Mindful Mouse, because I believe we can Im impact children so much earlier and maybe teach them mindfulness in a lovely way. So here I am. If you had told me five years ago that one day I would be a children's book author, I would have looked at you, would have considered you <laughs> certifiable. Uh, no, no. So bottom line is, that's what happens when you live a life to the fullest. So what triggered those transformations, though? I mean, we, it's always something triggers us to move to the next step. You were you were alluding to Alanon and Alanon. How did you get to know Alanon? How did that come into your life? How did you walk through those doors, right? <laughs> and then, um, and then you always. I always want to start with. Um, there's not always um, the people in general. They don't always get the credit that they deserve for walking through those doors. Whether we're talking about AA or we're talking about Alanon. And, you know, I have to be careful when I tell people about this because sometimes they get confused. Like, hey, so you're an AA. No, I'm an Al-Anon. But what are they? Well, Al-Anon is the sister program for the alcoholics and, um, and the family members. And um, so 15 years ago, um, of course, um, I walked through those doors for my divorce, which is often what happens, you know. Um, my second, my second husband, uh, the alcoholic and your mess, you know, um, for anybody out there that has strong goals, I, uh, divorce is never going to make us happy. You know, I was raised in a Catholic family, you know, we are supposed to stay together, right? So you're walking through the doors and you got this big failure on your forehead or that's how you feel, you know, and you're a mess. You're just a, you're just a hammered mess. You know what I mean? And, you know, I guess when you walk in those doors, you first, you think, oh, well, I'm here, you know, uh, you know, because of my dad was an alcoholic or my ex-husband's an alcoholic. And what you find out real quickly is the reason why you walked in those doors is because you're going to work on yourself. You're going to work on yourself and you're going to change your thinking. And um, you're not the boss. I'm sure you've heard this before. They always say, you know, the AAs are responsible for what they put in their mouth. Mm. The Al-Anons are responsible for what comes out of their mouth. Because the Al-Anons, we think we're the boss, right? Ooh. We think the boss. And we are going to control and we are going to fix everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right? I love it. I As love it's it. It's just the alcoholic's fault. And really, when we're talking about parties that are guilty, right? The parties that are guilty are both sides. All right. Because both sides are a little crazy. So how are we going to get this smoothed out? Right. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, love um, it. Yes. And um, so I picked up my uh, sponsor, my life coach, Ani. 15 years ago, two days later, she comes to me, you know, and, um, and like so many people in our lives, you know, the first thing that we think of is we think, oh my gosh, my life is so much worse than everybody else's. Mm. Poor me, poor me, right? Poor me, another one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then we find out something. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And then we go into the selfish thinking. Mm -hmm. We don't ever mean to go into selfish thinking, but it's just all me, me, me uh, inside. Nobody's going to understand my poor, pathetic life, right? Mm -hmm. And um, 
for me, one of the magics, one of the magics about changing thinking is when somebody changes you to say, you know what? I know that your life story was hard. I know that you've had a lot of pain and suffering, but just sit down for a minute. Just sit down. Let's go ahead and listen to everybody else. And then when you start listening, because I'm telling you, Al-Anon taught me a stronger, um, it took me years on the listening skills, which means you're always developing your listening. Um, But when you come out of that selfish thinking and all of a sudden you're looking around at everybody else, your life is not so bad. (laughs) And your life is so much, it's so much, uh, you're so much more, you're not lonely when you realize that it's not just you in this world, it's you and everybody else. And we're in this together. So 15 years ago, I would learn how am I going to be a better person? (laughs) And sometimes through the 15 years, when you're going to your Al-Anon meetings, and you're going to your ladies meetings, and we're learning, you know, how to be a better person, you want to point the finger at somebody else and say, oh, Please, God, could you learn to be a better person (laughs) like me? It would be so much easier. Life would be so much easier if you could just try to pick up on a little bit of this information. (laughs) Try it yourself. And you learn throughout the years. And some people, they'll go into AA or Al-Anon, the sister program, and they'll go out after a while. And um, But if you stay, if you stay, because... I stay in my church and I stay in my program and there's nothing perfect about it. Mm. But if you stay, it's, it's a wonderful, I mean, um, you just, people learn through your example, Mm. you know, I can't tell you how many people come to me. Now they're going to walk through the room. Uh, They'll let me do it. (laughs) They'll let me walk through, but please give them that advice Mm. because the advice and, and the change of thinking, it really does. It, Uh, It builds a a better, a stronger inner happiness because inevitably what you learn in life throughout the years is, you know, before I married my second husband, you know, the idea was, (sighs) I know I had some Dallas friends that talked me in. Okay. First off, if your friends talk you into marriage, this is already not a good deal. Right. (laughs) But the general philosophy or when you're younger is, Oh my gosh, if I'll, if I can just get married, if I can just get married, it will fix everything out there. And then what you learn over years is, you know, marrying somebody's not going to fix your problems. You got to fix yourself, you know? And um, so that's where we, that's what we're here, Steph, in current day to talk about. Mm. And that is so important, isn't it? It It is. I loved it how you said it but that it takes two to tango and oh, yeah. that that many of the frictions in a relationship especially if the relationship is fraught with alcohol or with one partner trying to escape reality through drugs through alcohol through prescription medications through eating you know all these kind of things whatever we try to whatever we do to try to escape our trauma um it makes it easy for that person to become the victim in the relationship to because it's all your fault. See, if you just would not be such a fat, lazy, drunk skunk, you know, it would be so much easier. Um, and in reality, it is. There is this kind of principle of disablement that really, uh, in most in many relationships, it's, it goes like that. And the moment you start actually learning to look after yourself and actually take responsibility for your actions, etc., you stand up. And if there is this this reliance on upon each other, it and uh, in a, in a negative way, then very quickly things will start changing because the other person has to either pick up his game or her game, or it goes crash. So you know, all these, all these years later, and again, these are your quiet thoughts. You don't mm-hmm. need to. That's another thing the program will teach you. You can think. You don't always. It doesn't always have to come out of the mouth. <laughs> um, but I tend to be more aggravated, or maybe get on my nerves a little bit. The people out there that are pretending to be perfect, right? 
And because the people out there that are pretending to be perfect, that's, that's what it is. You're pretending, exactly. you know? And um, I have, um, I think that more people should think, just think, take responsibility for your side and your actions. Mm. Okay. You know, we all in the matter of relationships do this, that, and everything yeah. wrong, mm. but the people that pretend that they're perfect, I, I feel like they have larger issues than at least the screw ups that accept responsibility. And then, Oh, by the way, can you, can you take responsibility and do better in the future? Cause that's really what it's about. People, they don't want to be judged on their backgrounds, you know? And in, for me, I'm sure, you know, we deal with backgrounds when we're talking about jobs or whatever. Hmm. And all I would have to say about that or what I talk to people about often is, is that, okay, so that was five years ago. That was 10 years ago. That was 20 years ago. Huh. Um, so are you current day? Did you learn from it? Did you grow from it? Did you try to correct it? Did you fix it? Because current day, what you did 30 years ago shouldn't be, I don't hold people against backgrounds. I don't feel like that's fair in life. Because if that were true, how many of us would have, you know, 10 years ago or 20 years or even 30 <laughs> years ago, just given up on life, you know? And um, so anyway, and people, they test my patience sometimes on their backgrounds. I'm like, you know, I'm not a priest. I'm not a pastor. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not actually a licensed counselor. So you know what? You don't have to tell me this. This is none of my business. Mm. They just want to tell me, <laughs> you know, so that's is, how I feel about it. But that's ownership. And once you, you practice extreme ownership, then this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I think this was, if you ask me what, what was the most important change that hit me in the last maybe three years or so, it was really reading Chucko Willing's uh, book, uh, Extreme Ownership. And uh, Chucko Willing is a, is a Navy SEAL and, and nowadays a very outspoken man who teaches leadership skills. And it is amazing. And, and basically he goes uh, by the mantra that whatever happens around you, it's your fault. Not as in, in a negative way, but in a, in a positive way. And he says, look, if, if someone below's, below you um, has fucked up, then either you have not taught him right or have not given him the tools or did not support him in the way to allow him to complete that mission or that job or whatever it is. If someone above you fucks up, then, then you have maybe not given that person the information that he needed to make the right call. The, the, to, you have not supported him being there with whatever is required for him to function. And to actually accept that take out the emotions, just look at that as a principle, suddenly your life changes. And I certainly found that for me. Um, it, <laughs> i give you an example. Uh, uh, and I mean, uh, it's the first time I say that, uh, I have said that ever actually. <laughs> as a doctor, sometimes uh, you, you drive too fast. And it's sometimes quite easy to actually wriggle out of that. Hey, I'm a doctor. I'm on the way to an emergency, blah, blah. Um, and and often enough, colleagues know you even. Police know you from the emergency department, etc. They say, hey, come on, doc, just take it easy. And one day I was, I was driving and I was driving too fast. And it was clear I was driving too fast. Beautiful day, straight long road, good music, foot down. And woo, 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 woo. Got stopped, and the policeman came to me. He didn't know me, and he said, "Is there a reason?" Uh, he, he at first gave me a bollocking. Then he said, "Is there a reason that you're going so fast?" And I could have said anything at that time. And I actually, I looked him in the eyes and said, "No, there was no reason. I fucked up." And he was astounded that I took it on the chin. He said, "Good, I need to write you a ticket." And I said, "That's okay." And it was a rather expensive ticket. But in all fairness, I felt good. I felt good to own up to it. No excuses, no wriggling out to actually take it on the chin and say, yes, I have stuffed up. I won't do that again. And that was one of the, the nicest moments. That was 
when I was growing. I felt growing that day, sitting there, still sweating from the adrenaline because I'd been, uh, <laughs> the lights went on behind me, but it was one of the most beautiful moments uh, in my life. And that is ownership. And that is when you start growing, when you're willing to go forward. I love what you just told me. That That is an amazing story and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> I'm the same way um, when it when it comes to just owning up like, you know, that's what people know. You know, I'm a very brutally honest person. So if I screw up or whatever the story mm. is, or maybe you think this is too crazy. This is just it's 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 just honest truth. Mm. I don't even know how to lie. I don't know how I think. Mm. I don't know. Maybe 20 years ago, I can remember trying to do a lie. It doesn't work for me. I'm just I'm one of those people. And um, but I'll just I owe up to it, you know, and, um, you know, honestly, in business, mm. in business, it, I have learned it is so much easier, even from a legal perspective or any or business perspective or a cost perspective to actually because we sell people apologize, Absolutely. handle the problem immediately Absolutely. and work through the issues. OK, um, it's the people that go into denial. They lie. They hide it. They hide. They sometimes people work harder in life. It's actually harder in life not to do the right thing versus if you were to turn it around and do the yeah. right thing. Exactly. You know, it's a lot less. They will spend time, energy, legal years doing the wrong thing versus stopping, stopping and saying, wait a minute, hmm. this is not right. How about if we fix it, you know? Hmm. And it drives me nuts. Hmm. It drives me nuts. And that's that's beautiful. And I think that that makes a good leader, uh, uh, leader uh, the person who he is. That I, I, I have never researched JFK. I don't know if he was a man who was able to say, actually, I stuffed up. I don't know that. But I could actually see him seeing being that man. Um, and I think that is, yeah, leadership is such a beautiful thing. And and when we talk leadership, I mean, obviously, you are uh, a CEO of a large company. Um, I'm, I, I am a leader in the sense that I take control in my environment um, as a doctor uh, in the various settings that I work. And it is, that is one thing of leader, but leadership can also be in a relationship that you are actually applying the same principles to a relationship. If you, if your, if your partner tells you that she's really angry with you with regards to something, yeah, you have a choice of either getting angry back at her or you could actually take the leadership and actually say, okay, let's listen first. What you said earlier, let's listen first and then say, what has she said and why has she said it? And often enough, you might actually find out, okay, yes, you're right. You left the socks in the middle of the room. Not good. I'm sorry, darling. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Number one. You know no. what? <laughs> I mean, when we're talking about, you know, our family matters or oh. our relationships are, um, you know, and we talk about a leader, it's not um, like I'm not a dominant leader. I'm a good old, I'm one of those females that, yes, I'm a dominant leader in the business. And, you know, some of the things I do out there are a little over the top, but I'm still a good old fashioned female that likes a man around. Um, and I will definitely listen to his voice. So when I think about leadership with family or children, or um, I think of setting a good example. Um, I truly um, feel by my example, then um, that that's truly what leads a family and your children, you know, and it doesn't mean always perfect. And honestly, um, <clears throat> I love having a life coach and a sounding board so that when it comes to my relationships or my family or my personal, sometimes you, you need that second voice of advice to make mm. sure are you are you headed in the right you know mm. uh, direction or are you making the right decision? I love having a life coach that I can trust that I can call up and bounce that off, mm. and um, we're not going to always make you know it doesn't make life perfect. It just makes managing things easier. You know, and then there's the good old fashioned, you know, I don't know at the when you wake up in the morning, can you forgive a person? 
Can you do a start over? Because I have been able to have some very, very long term relationships. Yeah. I'm not married yet. Don't know if we're going there, Mm. but I definitely through the program, you taught me tools to uh, longevity, whether we're talking about jobs, Mm. career, Mm. family, relationships, Mm. you know, the grass is not always greener on the other side of the fence. Hell yes. That's absolutely, that's absolutely right. right. And taking ownership again, it is, um, it takes two to tango, it takes two to fight. So let's be clear about that. Um, now, that is, I mean, leadership is is a beautiful thing once you take it to heart and once you make it a principle in your life. Leadership can also mean that you admit that right now you are, you had enough. I mean, last night it was, I came home after another, I don't know how many hour days and it is, I was just absolutely knackered. And I told my wife, look, I uh, love you to bits, but I'm now going to bed. I need some me time. And uh, I told my family that and just admit that, look, I'm, I'm, I'm just dead, dead man walking. And that's leadership too. Because if you now put a brave face on and try to be daddy or try to be the loving husband, guess what? It won't work. Because you're drained emotionally and, and to the point. So uh, leadership means also looking into yourself and actually mm-hmm. admitting and, and getting to know your feelings, getting to know what's really going on in you. Because only then can you function in the many roles that you have in your life. Um, and yeah, leadership means also admitting this enough is up, enough. Um, something, something very funny that I just kind of want to bring up. <clears throat> And um, for the people that like personally know me, then they know my personality and it's more of a, um, but my background, my business and and success, it can sometimes be intimidating for people that don't know me. Right. And um, there was one time in the matter of relationships. um, And um, I can remember, you know, because uh, I am a little bit more of a traditional, uh, the man makes some of the decisions. And by the way, we can be a strong leader, but still have that relationship side where we need both men and women. Mm. Anyway, we were going to run this video and it just made me laugh. And the reason why I bring it up about, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, nine or eight years ago, you know, <clears throat> I had some female business partners, you know, and they were so offended that I would cook for my boyfriend all the time. They're like, well, you're this title and that title. And you know what? You're out cooking for your man. <laughs> we were going to run this video like, ladies, it's OK. You can still cook and clean for your man. You know what I mean? And uh, because that is my personality. But I had so many guys that were like, can you roll a video where you can go ahead and tell those the powerful females of the world that it's okay if you cook for us. <laughs> but I got more criticism because I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a CEO or I'm an executive or I'm a boss. So this means we can't cook and clean. Ladies, we can do it if Absolutely. you want to do it. You know, Absolutely. you want to hire mean, somebody, hire yeah, them. That's but um, it's okay to have some of those traditional values and you can still be successful in a powerhouse and business, you know? But then again, on the flip side, if you consider uh, cooking demeaning, you're, you're taking away so much of yourself. You have got suddenly a moment where you actually go really mindful. You're focusing now on chopping that tomato because if you don't focus on it, you have got a finger less. Um, if you, you know, you might listen to some good music. You might actually bounce around and whilst we're, you're throwing the pasta throughout the kitchen, you know, whatever you, however your style of cooking is, it might actually be a mixture of exercise and you having a good time. It might be a, a, a sign of self-love because you are actually not eating out, etc. You're actually making something fresh from hand. You're putting the love literally into it, and then you will eat the love. And now you might actually say, wow, my relationship is actually really beautiful. And I put that love into that food. I present that food, uh, and maybe we put a candle on. And, you know, suddenly you're actually taking leadership uh, in your relationship by serving the, your partner and putting a smile on his face because or her face. Yeah. <laughs> Because men still like to be served. 
Ah. Uh, and girls and it's girls as as that's i've been out and you know you go to get your you know you get your boyfriend or something something and you bring it back and you're serving him and he's all like i like this you know uh, I mean? but other way around chivalry chivalry what? the other way around chivalry the holding a door up for a lady those kind of things it's so easy it's such a nice sign of respect how beautiful is that? Why do we not, why do we have to be hard-nosed? I'm hard. I'm a woman. I have got an artificial Y chromosome and I'm better than you. Fuck off. No, you're not. We are both in the same game. We are both in the same game and we need to be partners. If you want to be a hard-nosed bitch, well, why don't you, why don't you just do it with someone else? But sorry, I need a partner I can rely on. And there will be days when I go out and cook. There will be other days when you go out and cook. And there will when be other days when we say, oh, come on, let's order in. We're both so tired. Um, then we okay. agree. We can, um, we, can be, we can be successful leaders. We can be successful in business. We can have lots of titles. We can wear lots of hats. We can change the entire world. Mm. Um, but there's something about traditional relationships where you just want to have fun. Mm. And I love being able to just change into Kelly and just being Kelly. <laughs> I have to sometimes remind some of my family members, yeah. you do not want to work with me. Okay. I know you think you want to work, but uh, oh, when I'm a boss, okay, it is a, we're on a whole different level. How do you feel when I fire you? <laughs> well, exactly. Exactly right. I don't fire everybody, but the point is, is that yeah. um, sometimes it's nicer to be a family member than, you know, and, and again, I'm a good boss. But I also drive results. We yeah. have to drive results. I will give you the tools. I'll give you the keys. I'll give you everything. But I am one of those. Uh, you know, I've been a boss since I was 19. Um, unfortunately, I can fire people in my sleep. And um, not that I want to be a walking battle axe in business, mm -hmm. but business is business. We have to push results, you know. And um, it's just different. You yeah. know, it's but there, here's business. Yeah. Here's 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 relationships. Yeah, but no, use the same same principle. Um, look at your life. Look at everything. If you're such a result driven person, then make a goal. Right now, my end result, my goal is that I have ten minutes with the person I love or I want to reconnect or whatever has happened in your life. My goal is to have ten, fifteen minutes, lovely minutes with this person. So this is your goal. And therefore, you know, cooking might be a nice thing. Or actually, you having cleaned up, did a spring clean, and was a pick of a job, but you made fun out of it by having some good music going. And now you're sitting together and say, look what I have achieved. I came home yesterday. My wife had weeded the garden. And our garden in New Zealand, I mean, you, you look away and you look back and you need a machete to get through the weeds because we are, everything grows here so well. And we both didn't get around to it. And she actually took it on. She just weeded the front garden. And it was a beautiful. And she was so proud. Come on, come on, let me show you, let me show you. And it was so beautiful. Um, so therefore, this is something that you do for yourself and for your relationship. If you can repackage anything in your life into a positive message, into something, I'm actually doing that for myself, not because I have to do the bloody chores. No, you're doing it. You set your goal, you set your life, you run your life, be a leader. And that means also give yourself room when you need it or say, okay, uh, this I I don't have to fit to norms of society. If I want to be a boy, dress up like a girl, and I don't know, do whatever I wish, I don't care if that is what makes you right now happy. That's cool. If you want to learn surfing, because that is something you always wanted to do, and you're 65, well, what stops you? Okay, so you need to make sure that your goals right now fit and your goals might be, okay, I need to focus on the business, end of the story. Or it might be, I need to focus now on my relationship and whatever gets you there is, is right. So now leadership comes in so many shapes and forms. And I think if we, if we insist that we are that kind of leader, you take actually quite a, a lot of things away from yourself. You, so I think there's so much more to being a good leader. And I think you, if you've alluded to that, um, you can be a very good leader by being 
but jumping into the role of a traditional housewife. Um, or not, that, um, now, I don't know that you could turn me into just a traditional housewife because no, 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 I no. am a proud boss. Oh, yes. please. No, I hear yeah, you. I'm very proud. And, you know, funny thing is, is I'm, I'm very passionate about my career. I always have been. But the thing is, is that I'm passionate on both sides, you know, and um, but it would be very hard to turn me. Not, this is, I'm not insulting, by the way. Um, you know, I, I've got a sister and she's, you know, she spends her life with four children and I respect her. She's she's adorable, but we're different, you know. Uh. Um, but I love, I do love career. Mm. Um, I am very, you know, independent, strong. Um, mm. You know, I do a lot on my own. I'm just saying that on the funner side of life, that there is nothing wrong with a traditional um, be your gender and, you know, cook, clean, shop and love uh, and love. Uh, but you ain't taking my jobs away. <laughs> uh, you can't do it. All right. <laughs> absolutely. No, that's you awesome. not take me away from career. But Stefan, my dad is, you know, he's 73 and still has his pool company and you can't stop him. He's <laughs> he's going to the ground with the pool company. Uh, perfect. And perfect. Um, so I get it from, you know, I get it from my parents. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Kelly, uh, what a beautiful interview. We have really delved into the principles of leadership and have have looked at how leadership can look in various stages in our life, in various mm -hmm. aspects of our life. And that is really what this is all about. We no one is perfect, but we can we can try to do tiny baby steps into the right directions. And so uh, this was actually a really good interview. And I hope this was we awesome. Were, uh, hey. it was, it was It was awesome, and uh, I didn't mean to. I hope I didn't emphasize like that. You think I walk around and fire everybody? Ah. I, I, um, I'm a very strong leader in taking good care of people That's and generosity thing. and uh, doing the right thing in service work. Um, but I will drive. I'll I'll whip it when it comes to results. Uh. Yeah, look out. We're doing it. <laughs> and that's absolutely okay. So no leadership has also. It does also mean that you have to take sometimes uh, make the hard decisions. Okay, you have yes. to take responsibility, and that is equally and and again in life, you sometimes need to make the hard decisions. Maybe a relationship is so narcissistic or so toxic that you have to make a hard decision of walking away. Maybe a job is equally narcissistic, or maybe something else has to happen that hurts you now but in the long run will make your life so much easier. So no, that is a, a beautiful, beautiful summary. It is, there's not everything is roses and in recovery no. or in Al-Anon, et cetera. Yes, we are, we are building up stronger human beings, but ultimately crisis will reoccur. There will be new challenges happening in each life. And I think that's the key thing. It is, uh, don't expect all happy, dabby, That's only happens you in know, film. Funny, funny and ironic uh, topic um, because, you know, um, you do after working, you know, life program long enough, um, you do walk with a, a positive attitude. Well, sometimes people will mistake that is, oh, you're so positive. You don't have a problem in the world. <laughs> and what they don't realize is, is that I'm the type positive and branded person that I probably handle three times the problems because I'm a problem solver mm. um, out there in the world. And so life is never perfect. Carrying a positive spirit, um, it just puts you in a stronger mind frame mm. so that you can actually handle more mm. <laughs> in the matter of working with people and handling prob or problems, you know, people equal problems, which means you're <laughs> going to be a problem solver. Right? <laughs> Kelly, you're gorgeous. <laughs> you're gorgeous. And that is it. That is uh, it's such a beautiful, beautiful closure. Uh, this do what you can do. But and even if you step up, then then just re figure out what has occurred. Why? What lessons can you learn from it and move on and be the leader that you guys deserve to be. And and leadership is a beautiful thing. It's not it's not a curse. It is not a a, a funny label. It is just a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of taking responsibility, showing humility, showing showing that you have got a backbone 
And that is, that is a beautiful thing. Kelly, thank you so much for coming onto my show. I absolutely loved it. You have been just an amazing connection for this year. And I just think this was a beautiful interview. And, um, you know, I, I think I told you I've been doing a lot of open doors and windows. And Stefan, you're definitely a blessing. Is This has been <laughs> awesome. I Thank you very much. It. And guys, all if right. you wanted to find more out about, about Kelly and what she's doing, <laughs> I've put all the information down there into the description of the YouTube video and of the podcast. So uh, feel free, uh, see if, uh, if, her, if her message does gel with you. Maybe it is their ways of collaborating with, with Kelly. And who knows what the future brings. If we all create a big network of people who are willing to be leaders in the right way. Could you imagine that we can turn this world a bit around? Could you imagine that we make this world a little bit of a better place? I strongly believe so. And I know Kelly does too. So we both wish you a fantastic- Believe in the magic that we're gonna turn this world around. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> one step at a time, one Absolutely. step at a time. <laughs> Kelly, look after yourself and you guys out there stay strong. Okay, I believe in you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>